All right, so this time around, we want to take this little truck and throw it across a bridge because that stuff is fun. So if you're up for the challenge, follow along and then we will take this together, see how we can make this truck uh, drive across the bridge, do the jump and land on the other side more or less safely. So the first thing we want to do is to take the truck and get it rigged with launch control because that's going to make it so much easier for us to actually make this jump. So let's first make sure that the entire truck is inside a collection. Let's disable all the other collections and just focus in on this guy. So you can see it's quite a mess, this actual model outline. So this actual model is coming from 3D Sky. The model looks super good, but we just have to do a little bit of optimization before we can actually rig this car. So what we want to do is to take all the different wheel parts and connect them to the tire and then take one piece of the body and make that sort of the parent of everything else underneath the body. So let's just go in here, use box select to select the front wheel here. Let's select everything except or deselect everything else. Okay, that looks good. Let's in the end hold shift and then right click it or click it, then control P, object key transform. This way we can see that everything's connected to the tire. Let's do the same for this guy. And now let's just hit appear it in the keyboard over here. Get these guys and select all the objects underneath. Let's hide this and then select everything. Control P, object keeps transform. And let's just in this case select this roof piece and make that the parent of everything else. Now what we can go ahead and do is go in and check the quick tech tool. And you can see here we need a body and four wheels. What we can also do is rig the brake calipers. So in this case, they are in here and we just need to use these tags here. And to start off, let's just select the roof here, select the body. Then we can select the tires one by one. So this would be the front left. This here would be the front right. This here would be the rear right. And this here would be the rear left. Now let's do the same for the brake calipers. So this here would be the rear left. This here would be the rear right. This here would be the front right and this one here would be the front left. All right, that's great. So now we can just click rig vehicle and everything should be rigging correctly. To just check if everything is right before we get too far, what I will want to do is just drop down to the cinematographer and click mounted camera. This will just hook a camera to our rig so we can actually see if everything works. And you can see how we have the wheels that are spinning nicely without any wobble or shake or things like that. Right. Now I think it's time to bring the rest of our scene back. So let's just select those things here in the outliner. And we can see we have this default ground and launch control. Let's just drop it in here underneath the bridge because we might have a little bit of an issue here where there's no earth underneath. So let's just do this. Trust me, it will be easier later. And now we can take the car or we can take the path of the car and just shift it over here where we want it to start. Let's say we want to start around here somewhere. I think here's good. And you can see that now we can still play back, but the car is actually flying. So the reason for that is that we haven't defined any ground. So in this case, we can just take all the meshes that we think the car will be driving on, just select them one by one. And it doesn't matter if you get a few too many, that's perfectly fine. Let's jump into settings and just click add selected. And now you can see our car is stuck to the road. When we're driving, it works pretty well. The next thing we want to do is define our own path. So in this case, I think what we will do is just keep the actual default path in here, but modify it. So let's go to the top view. Let's jump into edit mode and then open up this little tool called curve pen. That's going to make it pretty easy to just uh, draw out the path we want. So in this case, let's click here. Actually, let's just move these points over a little bit. Let's click here, drag out. Here we could do some sort of like from side to side driving if it wanted to, but let's just keep it simple for now. Let's add a point here and then let's add a point here in the end. So this one we obviously want to go up like so. Let's rotate it as well around the Y axis. This is quite important for getting the jump right. Let's take this point. Let's scale up the tangent slightly. And that's pretty good. So now we can delete all these other points. Let's just X vertices and you can see our car jumped to a new path but it's inverted so what we can do is just select everything go to segments switch direction and we're good to go now we want to use a tool inside launch control called jump trajectory and this is just built for actually simulating a jump or basically making the path for you so you don't have to guess what the path would look like in the air and the way you can do that is just select the last point 
that you have. It needs to have the right rotation, so basically the angle of the bridge here. And then we can just jump down to the jump trajectory. And I think we need a speed around 120 kilometers per hour. The higher the speed, the further the car will fly. Let's hit jump. And you can see here that now it added extra points for us. And this looks pretty decent. Maybe this point should be a little bit lower. So the car would land around here. I think that's good, but I will just pull it back slightly because we maybe want the car to land a little bit earlier. So let's try something like this. Let's hit E on the keyboard and just drag this out on the Z on the X axis to finish the animation over here. So with this setup, we can go in and check and we get a little message above our car saying we should update the driving path. This is basically just for launch control to recalculate the total length so it can use that to calculate things like speed and accelerations. So let's jump in here. It's conveniently placed under the animate vehicle button, the update driving path button. And now we should be able to play back. But you will see that our car sort of drives a little bit, but then comes to a stop very, very anticlimactic in front of the bridge. And that's because it's still using the animation from before. So even though we changed the path, we didn't actually change the animation of the vehicle. A quick way to change that is just use the user path and drop in our driving path. So that's the same path we are animating on, but we just drop it back in here because then we can set a new start and end frame for this path. This would basically just animate the car from the beginning to the end of the path across the time that we are punching in here. So we can see if we end the animation at around frame 250, we will have a max speed of around 130. So you can see when we change this, the max speed is updating. And we already know we should be around 120 here in the middle. So let's just do something like this, hit animate. And now we can play back and we can see our car is driving, going over the jump, doing a little bit of funky stuff there, but it's sort of working. Now let's try to turn on the physics and see how that looks when we are calculating the actual forces while driving the car. What I will do now is just remove the top of the bridge to make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. So let's hit enable physics and we can see how our car comes driving, goes over the bridge and it looks like it got a little bit of a hit there and goes on its face. So maybe we need to polish the curve a little bit. Let's go in here and make sure that it's not too high. I think it might have been a little bit too high there. So let's just scale it down and let's play back again. We still have a little bit of a strange jump there. Maybe that's actually because we didn't set the physics preset. So here in this case, we want to use a heavy truck, which is more fitting for this model we're working with. All right, that's much better. Okay, so that kind of does exactly what we want. Uh, but it doesn't look so exciting right now. I think a way we can make it a bit more exciting is if we make the car fly a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and change the animation of the speed a little bit. So you can do that using the speed segments. So if you go in here, click speed segments, you will have this uh, virtual UI popping up. So the first thing we want to do is hold control alt on the last keyframe, click that one. That's going to add a keyframe in between. So here I think we should do a few things. First of all, I think we should have a running start. So let's just increase this to around 60 kilometers per hour and also not have a full stop in the end, but have something like 60 kilometers per hour out. And then we probably want to have the speed actual here be 120 and maybe have so that when the car is in the air, it has already dropped a little bit of speed from going uphill and stuff like that. So let's try something like this. So maybe what we want to do is to go into the customized settings here of the physics and just try to decrease the damping a little bit and increase the spring hardness. So the hardness of the springs basically controls how easily the springs will be compressed or how fast they will be compressed and making them higher will make the car more like fast and bouncy. Whereas if we lower that, that will make it very soft and smooth. The damping on the other hand is how fast the actual spring changes will come to a stop after they are initiated. So keeping this lower will make the car more bouncy as well. I think that works much, much better. We have much more action going on and you can see how that little change just made a huge effect here. But now we have some very squiggly things going on here in the end. So what I think we should do is actually maybe dial it a little bit back down. And then we also should be using the auto level. When we use the auto level, the physics will always try to do the equal impact on all the four wheels at the same time. So let's just take this up to something like 30, 25, 30% and play back again and see what we get. So we have the truck flying, 
and it's landing but now it's way too um even across all the wheels so let's try to take that back a little bit all right so i think this is dialed in a little bit better so we have some sort of landing that makes sense uh, but not too crazy so what i want to do now is just try to zoom in here and then find this slider called camber amount so that's the one that sometimes is really nice to turn up and you can see exactly what's happening when we just zoom in here on the landing so let's take a frame like this one here and see how the car is compressing the wheels a lot and if we turn this one up inside post mode you can see how we just get a little bit of rotation on these wheels so that's dynamically changing uh, depending on the physics and that's gonna just make the car um, feel more alive and feel more real a few other things we can play with here which might be really interesting is the roll and the pitch so for the roll we can sort of increase this to get a little bit more sideways motion we don't see a lot of it here because we don't have a lot of sideways motion but it would be exaggerated just a little bit with that let's try to just take this guy and rotate it a little bit more oh there we go there is a lot of roll so now we'll set it to 500 percent so let's try to take this down but this looks like it's actually caused by the bounciness so again this is very very tiny change if that makes a big difference all right i think that is closer to something we can use here you can really see the effect of it so if you turn it off turn it up it will wobble a lot from side to side here in the end and if you turn it all the way down it will do much less of that and just in case you stumble across this issue where the truck is sort of like compressing into the ground and you get this clipping error message what you can do is actually go into the manual gearbox scroll down to your find a view then go to the expanded ui and then you can go into post mode and take these two handles here they basically just push up the front body of the car in the right and left side so you can animate these with keyframes to compensate for this very intense compression if you want to keep the simulation as is when you have been adjusting your physics and you're happy with the result what you can do is bake the physics and this just makes sure to lock the physics so they don't change even when you play the animation forwards and backwards and they also stay consistent when you start the render you can always free the physics again if you want to go back and start to adjust it again